Hello. Welcome to Lucy Fig Beautiful World of Painting. Today I have a wonderful deco art project. Um, it's a lot of fun and it's simple. Believe it or not, it's simple. Um, I did this on a little canvas just for practice and just to try the colors out and I wanted something really vibrant, okay? I'm using deco art premium paints and the pigment is so wonderful. You can see how vibrant it is. Of course, if you wanted to tone it down, you could, okay? I just wanted something vibrant. Now, what I did first was I borrowed a tracing, which I'm going to show you, and I first want to give a shout out to Ian Harris, okay? And you can look Ian Harris up at, um, on YouTube, okay? I just want to see how to say it here. It's Ian Appolis, and he's called the Acrylic Guru of Australia. He has some wonderful beginner lessons that you can go and see, and he uh, lent me his tracing today, okay? So what I did was I um, printed out from his site um, this tracing and I ran out of graphite paper, all right? Usually I put the graphite, black graphite paper and I trace it. However, I ran out. So I said, uh-oh, I have to improvise a little bit now. So what I did was I took some um, charcoal, some drawing charcoal and I rubbed it on the back. I put it on my, my canvas and I traced over with a pencil, okay? Now, here's the downside of it. It's a little sloppy. I usually use the DecoArt accessories line um, and I use their gray graphite and then it's very neat and it comes out dark and all. This is fine to do in a pinch and I didn't mind, but you can see it's a little sloppy. But I did want to thank him for letting me use his, um, his nice tracing, okay? Now, let me put that aside and we're gonna get painting. Um, here we go. This is an 11 by 14 and it is a Frederick's red label canvas. And it's a, it's a medium uh, grain canvas. Um, I, sometimes I put gesso on it, this time I'm not, all right? Because I can use it just like this, all right? We, um, we have this, this little, little lady here sitting and just looking out. Of course, you can do any background, uh, but once you get this tracing on, use your imagination, you can do any kind of background you want. All right, so I am using the um, Deco Art Traditions brushes as usual, and this is the uh, big brush. It's a number one brush because I have a lot to fill in over here, okay? So I'm going to start someplace around here, just making an imaginary line. Um, I don't want to have this canvas be in half, so I want the, the grassy area to be a little lower, all right? So I'm just going to dip in here. I'm going to get a paper towel back here in case I dip a little too much in the water. I want this paint nice and vibrant. I don't want to water it down. So I'm going to start about here by her arm to do the background. I'm going to start with the lighter color, which is yellow. All right. So I'm just loading my brush up with some yellow and I'm going to go across about here. Now this painting is not going to be exactly the same colors and I'm not going to make it exactly the same colors. The great thing is about um, doing a little uh, practice painting is you see what you don't like and then when you go and do your painting, you can change it accordingly, okay? So what I do like is this big brush. Look how I can just kind of fill this in. I'm not worried if I get into her hair because I'm gonna be covering that with darker colors, okay? So right now, I just wanna get some of this yellow on here, all right? And I'm going to go into the orange. And I want to come and now start to put some orange in. So you can see, I'm just blending it down. I didn't want that bright yellow. I wanted a little bit tinted orange. So I'm gonna show you again how I did that on the other side. I dipped just a tiny, tiny bit in the orange. And while it's wet, I'm just blending the colors together. Okay, and there I toned down that yellow a little bit. And I can see it already looks different than my other painting, and that's a good thing. This way, not every painting looks the same. I can come down, bring it down a little bit more. Like I said, not worried I'm getting it on her because the colors on her are gonna be darker. So now, if you don't want these lines in, you can come in and you can smooth it out and work on it as much as you can. I just wanna show you how to get this look. At home, you'll have plenty of time to work on it. All right, so you can see, just starting to get some of that orange in. Wanted to even that out a little bit going across. There we go. Now, I have a friend, Mike in Monroe, who said that my colors were too dark. <laughs> so it depends on taste. So maybe I won't make it as dark today just to 
to show him, hey, Mike, I didn't make my painting that dark, okay? So I want to use a little darker orange, though, up there still, though, all right? I just want to fade that up into a darker color. All right, there we go. So you can see, just going back and forth, back and forth. My brush is a little bit wet, all right? I'll go a little bit more. There we go, and there's a nice orange going up, going up to a nice, rich, rich sunset. All righty, now I'm going to go into some magenta. Really rich color, another rich color. I put just a little bit. You can see I didn't even wash my brush because I wanted all to blend together. So there's no reason to wash the brush. There we go. Right across, getting a little bit more. Okay, I like the coloring and I'm just pulling it down a little just to kind of fade it up a bit. The next color I'm going to be going into is the dioxazine purple and that's really dark. Well, actually, I'm going to put a little bit of blue in there, I think. Okay, so I'm going to go into some phalo blue again. I'm still not washing that brush because I want it all to come together. Now it's getting a little darker. Actually, it's getting a lot darker. So I'm going to push that out a little bit. Rather than put more paint, I'm just going to start blending it, blending it. And you can see that the um, violet is coming out there. All right, now I'm going to go into that dioxazine purple. And the top is going to be real, real dark. All right, now it depends on how heavy you put this on, will depend on how dark it is, okay? So now mine is lighter than my other one. So you'll be able to see the difference, all right? So I, it's, it's different, but the same, okay? So that's something that you'll work on, but you can see all I did was blend, and I'm doing a light touch and blending. All right, back and forth, light touch. So, see that? I didn't want that over there. Simple, wipe it off. I'm gonna put this brush in the water and I wanna try to get some of that coloring out because now we're gonna do the bottom green, all right? And just wiping some of that water out. And I'm going into a sap green. I'm not loading the brush in any particular way, just putting the green on. And I'll just come right across here. We'll get that sap green on. Now, I won't be able to see if it's straight, I stand back, ah, it's pretty straight. Okay, at home, you can, you can actually use a level if you wanna really have it straight. But this is just a fun beginner painting, okay? So I don't want you to fuss too much and start taking out the tools. Just, this is just the idea to learn how to start to blend some colors together. Now you can see I'm just using this big brush and I'm just kinda going around my painting. I mean, I'm sorry, my drawing, okay, see? I don't have to change brushes. If you're more comfortable, sure, you can. All right, so now, what I want with this green, because it's supposed to be just like a little bit of grassy area, I want to flip-flop the brush around a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a design. I'm not gonna start painting grass in. We don't really have any detail in here, and it's great when you start to do um, people, to do the back of people, because the hardest part is the face. All right, so. Just flip-flopping it back and forth. I can layer it on if I want, all right? So in other words, if I want to even make it um, more vibrant color, I could wait a couple minutes and let it dry and I can put some more paint. So for now, we'll just leave it like that. What I do want to do is I'm gonna leave my, move my water out of the way here. I want, I want you to see, I'm just taking some of the green, I'm dipping in a little brown. I'm just gonna mix that up. I want to make it a little darker. I want to give just a little bit of depth. This is a great way for beginners to learn a little, how to put a little bit of depth in their painting. So I'm coming da down at the bottom and see how it's still green, but that brown kind of made it darker, okay? And that's gonna make it look like it's forward towards you more. All right, so I wanna put a little bit of that in there. Now, I like the way that looks. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do it again. Just mixing a little bit of the brown in with the green. And I wanna darken it up a little more because I like the way it looks. Okay, so my canvas, uh, my, my um, easel is a little bit in the way down there. That's all right, just kinda squeezing it in. So I'm getting some darker paint in there. Then I'm gonna come back again with my green because I do like the way that looks a little bit darker here. All right. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of that green in. But again, I'm flip-flopping the brush back and forth and I'm not blending it, okay? 
I'm just getting that green on. I want it to look a little bit texture, just maybe like a little grass. I mean, you could really get fancy and you can start lifting the brush up to try to get a little bit of a, a you know, grassy look in there. And it depends how far you want to go. I just kind of want to get this coloring on just to show you how you can build this painting. All right, so I can see it's a, it is a little crooked. I'm just going to stand in the front for a second. Excuse me for a second. I'll try to make that a little tiny bit straighter, but you know what? I think it's okay just for the, the sake of the show to get this lesson out to you. So I'm done with this big brush. I'm going to make sure I put it in my water basin. We don't want the paint to ever dry in a brush. That's what ruins the brushes, okay? These are wonderful brushes, so we want to try to take good care of them. These are the Traditions brush line. Okay, so I washed that out pretty good. It's going to dry it in case I need it again. I don't think I will, but just dried it a little bit, all right? So that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to a smaller brush. This is a flat brush, all right? You can see it's flat. I have a nice chisel edge on it. It's a number 12. And I'm just going to wet it and then pat it on a paper towel. So what I think I'll do is I'll start from her, um, her skirt. Now in the skirt, I used some gray and then I went and I put a little bit of dioxazine purple in there just to give it a little like a shadow almost. This is just a good way for beginners to start to um, realize that um, there's folds in material and if you put dark next to light, you can make things look like it's folded. This is a simple, simple way to start. All right, so first I'm going into gray. And I'm just going to start to get some gray on here. All right, and I'm just going to paint it right in here. And I still, I'm, I'm kind of remembering a little bit of where the lining might be, okay? But it's okay if you don't. You just kind of wing it a little bit. And what you'll do is you'll go and you'll put some, um, some, you know, darker color on top, okay? Now I saw that part of this is supposed to be her leg and I painted over it. So I'm just gonna, I'm leaving that little portion there to show that it's her leg. And I'm, paint, I'm just gonna paint this in gray. All right? So I have an idea of where I can put some of the little folds. And like I said, if it's not exactly uh, where it should be, hopefully Ian won't be writing to me saying, I wanted those folds in that certain spot, but I'm sure he won't. <laughs> look him up and take a look at his other uh, drawings and paintings, and uh, you can learn a lot from him. He has some really, really nice beginner lessons, and he offers a lot of free um, drawings, uh, you know, that you can print out and all. Uh, he's very, very helpful. If you write to him, he's happy to help. He's like me. He likes to teach beginners, and he likes to get people, um, you know, people started in painting. And he is... Uh, paints in acrylic. Okay, so there. I might have painted that on a little bit too neat. I didn't even have to. So you know what I could do? Is I could just even come in and just layer some of this paint on, okay? And you, you might be able to see how you can get a little dark and light just from using the same color. What I want to do is just I'm going to put my brush a little tiny bit in the purple. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to put some of this purple. I'm just going to outline a little there maybe make a little lining like this. See, I'm not really, not really doing it in any rhyme or reason. All right, once we get a little bit of this color in, it's just gonna look like it's maybe uh, an illusion of some folds in the material. We just want people to realize that it's a skirt. All right, when they look at it, they'll be like, oh, there's a girl sitting in a skirt looking at a sunset, okay? And that's really what we're looking for. We're not looking for, for any fine detail. I just want you to see how to um, get an illusion, all right? And that's how you get started. The more little illusions you learn, the more comfortable you'll feel to get into more advanced advanced work, okay? There we go, all right? So I can come back and put a little more purple on that, but I, I think you get the idea of it. I'm gonna wash this brush out, and I'm going to move up to her her blouse that she's wearing. Now that blouse, I you know, I love pink. Everybody knows I love pink. So. What I did was I came in with the quinacridone and magenta as well, all right? So I'm going to put some of this beautiful color on, and I want to make sure I don't cover her arm up, all right? So you can see I'm just going right over that yellow there, all right? There we go. Just kind of, yeah, I'm using the chisel edge of the brush. See the edge? I'm using the edge where there's an edge, okay? 
And same thing, I can use the, to outline. You can see how I'm using the brush to outline. You can see how nice this brush is. You can see how the bristles move back and forth, so you can control them. At first, it's a little hard when you're just learning how to control the brush, but little by little, you'll learn. See, I kind of went around. Um, then I can pick the brush up on the chisel edge and make a straight line. So this is all what you'll practice, and that's why um, the more shows that you see, the more little tricks you'll learn how to use the brush and control the brush, all right? So what I'm doing here is I'm painting it in, all right? There we go. It's such a beautiful color. Um, just painting it in again, going around, trying to be a little bit careful. I don't want it too sloppy. <laughs> it's, um, you know, in the, the time I have, it's easy for me to get sloppy because I, you know, kind of have to hurry to get the lesson out. But at home, I say it every single show. Take your time, you don't have to go this fast. So you can see I'm just painting it in. I mean, it's like coloring in a coloring book, okay? Um, we're just trying to get you to, to hold the brush, get used to using the brush, and that'll help you in your other projects. I see some white showing, I can go back again, and I could just come back in here, and put a little heavier paint on. And such a pretty color, all right? It looks different than my other one, probably because in my other one, I took the, um, the pink and I actually came in with a little pink. So that's all. All I'm going to do is get some pink in here. Okay, the other color is um, quinacridone and a little magenta. So now this is getting a little closer to what I had, but you know what? I, I just love pink, so I'm just gonna throw this pink on. I'm actually blending it a little bit. And I like that it looks a little choppy, so it does kind of look a little more natural like a, like a, like a top she's wearing, okay? So I just wanted to bring this down a little bit. There we go, all right? Now, the same thing that I did in her skirt, I did in the top. And I came in with um, some purple. I'm just gonna wipe my brush off, no reason to wash it this time. Going to this dark, dark, dark purple, okay? And I can come in and that's part of her sleeve there and maybe a, a little bit of lining in her top. And I'm just thinking about where Ian had his lines and I don't remember exactly where they were, but I, he had those lines there, which I have kind of in my mind that I can say, okay, you know, that's good to put some lining there. We can outline a little here, you know, just little dark, little lights. And that's what helps again, the darks and the lights. Okay, here we go. And I can still come back, make changes. This is not all, all set yet, all right? Just want to kind of get that on there a little bit. I think that's pretty good, all right? so. I'll come up to her hair now. I am gonna wash out that brush right now. I'm going to go into brown. What's fun about this is, I didn't see an example of his painting. I decided I wanted her, her hair to be brown. Now, um, this is a cute painting that you can make for anybody because you can change the hair color, of course, and use it as a gift and say, you know, oh, that's you on the beach, um, you know, just by the hair color alone, okay? It's a little trick. So right now, I'm going to do the brown and I'm um, just gonna come in with the brown, and what I wanna do though is I wanna feather it out a little bit. So I'm just gonna kinda use the brush and feather the hair out, just to make it look like perhaps the wind is blowing the hair a little bit, all right? And just kinda coming down. Now, this, this color is still wet, all right? So if I go into that, it might pick a little bit up. That's okay, because all we have to do is when it dries, I can come in, and I can go over it again. So you can come in and, and go over that. So I want that a little bit darker. All right, there we go. And you can see I'm going with the way the hair is. So I'm kind of moving it this way, okay? And I'm just using the brush to the, to the, the full use of it, all right, I should say. All right, there we go. So we have a little bit of hair in there. Um, what I actually did was I came in and I actually put a little bit of purple I didn't wash the brush out. I put a little purple, just make, so maybe it's just picking up some of the color from the sky or something, or maybe just some darks, you know, just to get a little bit of contrast in there so it's not just all one blank color. All right, now I can have it later if they're dries, I can actually have it, her hair come down over her shirt, okay? So now what I wanna do is 
I'm gonna mix a color for skin. There's a couple different ways that you can, you can mix a skin color, okay? A skin color, you can mix with a little bit of orange, a little bit of sienna. Um, you can add a little bit of white. You don't wanna add too much white with skin because it'll make it look unnatural, like a pasty color, all right? So let me just try a couple different ones. I have some sienna, and of course you could use the straight sienna, all right? You could see if you add a little white, That'll tone it down. It might look like an unnatural color. You can add a little orange. All right, so now I'm just playing around with it, just to see. All right, so that may be a little too orange. Maybe add a little more white. So when you're looking for trying to get a skin color, okay, you can add orange, you can add a little red, you can add a little brown until you find skin color that matches. So what would make this such a great gift, okay, is if you, just this little part here on her arm and leg, if you match the person's skin color and you match their hair color, you can even match their size a little bit, okay? You could actually say this is you, all right? And someone would really love that as a gift. All right, so let me take a look what I have here. I have a, a little bit of a skin color, let me take a look. It's not, it's actually not so bad. Maybe I could add a little brown, all right? And see how that is. So as you can see, you just want to try to play around a little bit on your um, palette and find a skin color that you want. Okay, so my paint is still a little wet, so there's a chance I'll get a little, a little pink in there, and that's okay. So that's not a bad skin color. I got pretty lucky there doing that pretty quick. So let me go around here. All right, and there we go got her little leg in there, okay? So I'm just gonna stand back a little bit and see. So now I'm gonna wash my brush out again. And now that I have the first layer of paint on, what I can do is I can start adding and adding to where I want, all right? So I think in this case, I, I like the idea of having um, the bottom be darker to show a little depth. Right now it looks a little flat. So I wanna start adding a little more to show some depth. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to go into my, my sap green. I'm gonna take some brown and I wanna make this darker, okay? There we go. Now, if I wanna make it even darker than that, I can actually take one of these darker colors, like a blue or a purple and watch what happens. Okay, that's really gonna darken it, but without changing the color, okay? Because I only put a little bit in. So now, I'm gonna take a look at that and see if it's dark, as dark as I want. Yes, yeah, see how dark that is now? I like that dark, okay? So you can see, what I did was I just took some of that blue, but not a lot of blue. I still want it to look green, all right? And I'm coming back and I'm getting in this dark color. Now, I'm going to blend a little and I'm gonna put more green, but I just wanna show you. Now that I put in this dark color, you can see the depth of the painting better, just by me putting in this little, little inch or so of darkness, all right? So I'm gonna come back, put a little bit more, and again, I want it a little choppy. I'm just gonna go into the regular sap green, okay, which is lighter, of course, all right? And I'm just going to come in and make this darker here too, and up against her. All right, so now you can really see the depth coming along. There we go. I'm gonna come back up to her dress. All right, her, her skirt, I should say. And we want darks and lights and darks and lights. So you can see the difference now that that's dark. It's unreal that when you put a dark in the front, how everything now is starting to look behind it. Okay, so still back in the green again, all right. And I'm gonna leave some areas up top here that are lighter, okay? So I really like that better now that we have that, that little variation of color, all right? I just wanna go around her leg a little bit more. I wanna make sure that you can see that it is, it is part of her, her leg, all right? There we go. So now what I'm doing is I'm, the painting is pretty much done. All right, it actually is done. What I'm doing is I'm starting to look at it um, from a different point of view and say, okay, now what, is there anything I don't like? Is there anything that has to be changed? So right here, I would like to get a little more green in here, okay? So I'm just neatening up now, kind of cleaning it up a little bit. I can come back, straighten that out. I'm looking at her leg over here. 
Okay, I'm going real close. See what I'm doing? I want to go around her leg. All right, I can just kind of come in here. and Now, we don't want to get all, rid of all the light. We want some of that light to show through. But see now her leg really shows through. Her arm is showing better now. I put the dark next to the light. All right, dark next to light really helps. So I'll wash my brush out a little bit again. Come pat it dry. All right, I'm gonna come back into my dioxazine purple. And I'm just gonna start again, putting a couple little more lines in here, just so we get a little bit more folding look. All right, and that's what's gonna help make it look a little folded again over here. Maybe get a little here. So I'm not really, um, it's, I'm not following exactly um, Ian's um, tracing, okay? I'm just trying to use it as a guide, all right? Now, like I said, you can follow the tracings exactly. He has some wonderful tracings. This one I just wanted to use as a guide because I thought that it would be so nice to put these deco art colors on and make a nice vivid painting, all right? There we go. So you can really see now how it's really coming, coming to life. She's coming to life a little bit. All right, over here, I wanna do the same thing. I wanna kind of make her, her top look a little more balanced, okay? A little more dioxazine purple. I don't wanna overdo it either. You all know I have a tendency to overdo a bit. <laughs> I say I'm stopping and I don't stop, all right? Uh, that's kind of common, all right? I wanna just cut off her sleeve over here so I can put a little bit there. I can put a little bit here on her sleeve. So you can see how we can keep going and going and we can just start to embellish and fill in, all right? So look, at I'm just putting a little bit on the bottom there. So now we'll separate her blouse from her skirt. All right, so one last thing before I go. I want to make her hair uh, a little browner, all right? So I'm going into my brown. I washed out my brush just a little bit. And I'm just going to come over and add a little bit of blue to that brown and darken it up a little, all right? Again, we don't want to change it too much. We just want to try to darken it a little. So yeah, that it did change it to a gray. I'll add a little more brown. Sometimes when you add a color, it's so overwhelming that it will change it. But see, I added a little more brown and that worked. So now I'm gonna come in and there we go. I got that darker brown that I wanted. See, there we go. So you can see how you can layer. It tacked up a little bit, it started to dry. And now I got the nice brown layering on there. Okay. So I think that's it. I hope you liked this beginner lesson. Um, please come look for me on Facebook. I have lots of videos for you to see, uh, lots of tips and tricks uh, for you to learn, and feel free to write to me. Thanks again for tuning in.